AMD's Ryzen 5 5600X and Ryzen 7 5800X have been the company's go-to 6 and 8 core options since their launch in late 2020. Healthy performance offerings coupled with numerous price drops made them firm fan favourites for a long period of time. But in late 2021, Intel struck back with formidable competitors in the 12th gen Alder Lake lineup, most notably the sub £300 Core i5-12600K. AMD knew that a retaliation was necessary, particularly given the hefty price drops already applied to the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 chips. And this is where the new lower cost Ryzen 7 5700X and Ryzen 5 5600 come into the picture. With that introduction done, let's keep it nice and simple and take a look at the fundamental specs of each processor. Ryzen 7 5700X has 8 cores and 16 threads with 36 megabytes of cache, 32 megabytes of which is level 3. Base clock is listed at 3.4 gigahertz, that's 400 megahertz slower than the 5800X. And maximum boost clock is 4.6 gigahertz, that's 100 megahertz slower than the 5800X. Notably, the 5700X is rated TDP as 65 watts as opposed to the 105 watts of the 5800X. This will likely have a considerable influence on the actual Precision Boost 2 operating speeds of both chips, particularly as neither come with a boxed cooler and so a good all-in-one or air heatsink is anticipated for usage. In the UK, the Ryzen 7 5800X is around about £290 to £310, but mainly about £310 whereas the Ryzen 7 5700X is now £270 on the street. Intel's notable competitor is the £270 Core i5-12600K that features 6 performance cores and 4 efficient cores for 16 total threads. Ryzen 5 5600, or non-X if you prefer, has 6 cores and 12 threads and 35 megabytes of total cache, 32 megs of which is L3 once again. Base clock is listed at 3.5 GHz, that's 200 MHz slower than the 5600X, and maximum boost clock is noted at 4.4 GHz, that's 200 MHz slower than the 5600X, though this remains to be seen in actual operation. TDP for both Ryzen 5 chips is 65 watts, and they both ship with the same AMD Wraith Stealth CPU cooler, so I'm anticipating very comparable real-world operating clocks from both of the Ryzen 5 parts, and if that is the case, it may make the newer, cheaper Ryzen 5 5600 a bit of a bargain compared to its x spec sibling. The 5600X street price is around about £190 to £210 in the UK, but mainly about £210. The new Ryzen 5 5600, however, is £180 in the UK. Intel's £165 12-thread Core i5-12400F is the notable competitor. And for completeness, the new processors use the same Zen 3 chiplets built on TSMC 7 nanometer process technology alalongside the standard 12 nanometer built Ryzen 5000. Die. And if we look at the platform for these new chips then, as always, AMD seems to have a strong advantage versus Intel when it comes to ease of deployment. AM4 is, well it's been around forever it seems like now. Users on older B450 or X370 motherboards who want a quick drop in upgrade aren't going to care that the expensive Z690 platform is more feature rich and supports DDR5. With that said, those opting for a new motherboard and processor may do well to look at B660 on the Intel side of things because that does look to be, a, albeit slightly more expensive, but a valid competitor to AMD's B550, but a little bit more feature rich. So that's worth bearing in mind. Upgraders, AM4's got you covered. Brand new, we'll have to see how the CPUs perform. We're going to be pitting the Ryzen 7 5700X and Ryzen 5 5600 against their higher clocked siblings on the AM4 platform. We're also gonna run the notable Intel competitors as comparison data so the Core i5-12600K and the Core i5-12400F. The Intel Alder Lake chips will run an Asus ROG Strix Z690 motherboard and alongside 32GB of Corsair Dominator Platinum DDR5 memory. Our AMD motherboard of choice is the superb Gigabyte X570S Aorus Master using a GSA version 1.2.0.6b. We've got 32 gigs of dual rank 3600MHz CL16 Corsair Vengeance memory. The graphics card is the Gigabyte RTX 3080 Eagle OC, which is no longer the fastest kit on the block, but still packs enough sensible horsepower to analyze the CPU's gaming abilities. Cooling comes from a 360mm Acertec all-in-one liquid cooler. 
And we get clean juice from the Seasonic TX1000 titanium rated 1 kilowatt power supply. Our gaming tests are going to focus on 1080p gaming as we've already seen that it's best for highlighting intricate differences between the CPUs available. We've seen with our recent Ryzen 7 5800X 3D review, do check that out, that even at 1440p you really do need a lot of graphics horsepower to notice a tolerable difference between the CPU's performance just because you have to get frame rates so high to show that difference. So this end of the market we're going to focus on 1080p because we think it makes a bit more sense. And as always, if you want more details, then head on over to the main Kikuru written website. Looking at clock speeds, the Ryzen 7 5700X run at around about 3.85 GHz all core and the Cinebench R23 NT load in. This saw the 65 watt TDP chip using its full 76 watts of package power allowance, so that was the clear restriction under the Precision Boost 2 algorithm. By comparison, the 105 watt TDP Ryzen 7 5800X used its 142 watts of package power allowance to run at 4.56 GHz all core, a full 0.7 GHz higher. The Ryzen 5 5600 runs around about 4.25 GHz, once again using its full 76 watts package power allowance. By comparison, the 5600X also has a 76 watt power allowance, but managed to squeeze out an extra 25 to 50 megahertz. So there really isn't too much all core clock speed difference between these two Ryzen 5 chips, based on our testing of course, despite the price difference. Let's take a closer look at some test results. Starting out with rendering workloads, we see the Ryzen 5 5600 sitting a smidgen behind the Ryzen 5 5600X due to clock speed differences. The Ryzen 7 5700X is well behind the 105 watt TDP 5800X that runs around 700 megahertz higher clocks. Notable, however, is that both Intel Core i5 parts outgun their AMD price competitors by a considerable margin. In fact, the Ryzen 5 5600 priced Core i5 12400F offers up rendering performance closer to the Ryzen 7 5700X than the 5700X does to its price comparative Core i5 12600K. And it's a complete demolition by Intel when it comes to Cinebench 1T performance too, higher clock speeds and the competitive architecture of the thank you. Intel's offering coupled with DDR5 memory are much faster options in our rendering tests. Handbrake H.264 conversion places the Core i5-12400F and Ryzen 5 5600 basically level. AMD's chip does well to claw back performance here, but the £270 12600K is a sizable 23% quicker than the new £270 5700X. With H.265 conversion, the Ryzen 5 5600 is slightly quicker than the Core i5-12400F, but once again, the Ryzen 7 5700X is massively outgunned by the Core i5-12600K, this time to the tune of 13%. AMD's two new chips do very well with 7-zip workloads. The 5600 beats the 12400F in compression, and by a whopping 35% for decompression, while the 5700X is slightly behind the 12600K for compression, but is a sizable 14% quicker for decompression. If you care about memory bandwidth, it comes as no surprise to see Intel's DDR5 platform winning out. That's particularly interesting given AMD's relative strength in 7-zips file management workload. We can only assume that DDR5 would also present a large performance gain to AMD, but that's one for the future. Of course, Latency is the area where our DDR4-based AMD chips beat out the Intel competitors with DDR5 for our test setup. Intel's price-comparable chips are far superior in 3 Mark Time Spy. The 5600 non-X does roughly manage to match the 5600X though. And the trend for 3 Mark's CPU profile benchmark is more or less the same. Looking at gaming results, it's all very tight in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, a game where we look to be heavily GPU-limited with our overclock 3080. The 5600 and 5700X are only marginally slower than their Intel competitors by virtue of 1% low FPS numbers. Borderlands 3 has the Ryzen 5 5600 almost matching the 5600X and performing a few FPS above the Core i5-12400F. The Ryzen 7 5700X is a little slower than the higher clocked 5800X and it cannot quite match the 1% low performance of the 12600K. In F1 2020, there is not much difference in performance between the Ryzen 5 processors and Intel's Core i5-12400F, albeit with the latter having a slightly higher 1% low result. Both Ryzen 7 non-3D chips offer the same performance, and they cannot quite match the Core i5-12600K. 
Far Cry 6 shows the 5600 unable to maintain pace with the 5600X, and more so the 12400F, which is notably quicker for 1% lows. The Ryzen 7 5700X is also a little slower than its higher TDP sibling, and it, once again, cannot compete with the FPS offered up by Intel's 12600K. Shadow of the Tomb Raider averages a solid score on the Ryzen 5 5600, matching the 5600X and being higher than the 12400F. Intel's chip is better for the 1% low numbers though, and that's probably more important given the loftiness of the absolute average FPS values. Ryzen 7 5700X and 5800X are roughly equal here, but we see the same trend as just mentioned. The Ryzen chips have better average numbers, but Intel's 12600K is quicker for 1% low values, which are arguably more important at these FPS ranges. The Ryzen 5s roughly match each other in our Watch Dogs Legion test, but they are well behind the Core i5-12400F. The Ryzen 7 5700X is within margin of error of the 5800X, but neither chip is as fast as the Core i5-12600K, particularly when looking at 1% low FPS values. To summarise our 1080p gaming results, the Ryzen 5 5600 is marginally quicker than the Core i5-12400F for average FPS data. This outcome is skewed by a big victory for the Ryzen chip in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a game which runs at 182 FPS on the 12400F versus 197 FPS on the 5600. So an extra 15 FPS for the Ryzen 5 is fine, but it's kind of immaterial at such high levels anyway. As such, it's perhaps fairer to call the Core i5-12400F and Ryzen 5 5600 close to a draw for average FPS results. 1% low FPS numbers though, that's a big win for the Intel chip, with the 12400F actually offering higher performance than even the Ryzen 7 5800X in this metric. The Ryzen 7 5700X is slower than the Core i5-12600K on average. Once again, a big victory for the AMD chip in Shadow of the Tomb Raider influences the data. Intel's 16-thread Core i5 is also far superior in terms of 1% low FPS numbers. Modest power draw is exactly what we expect from AMD Zen 3 architecture. The Ryzen 5 5600 and Ryzen 7 5700X sip power thanks to their 65 watt TDPs limiting them to 76 watts of package power. In fact, system-wide power draw for these chips is about the same as the CPU-only power usage for a Core i7-12700K. Looking at the Ryzen 7 5800X, we see that an extra 66 watts of package power is required to deliver just over 700 MHz uptick in clock speed. Zen 3 really is very energy efficient when clock speed is held back. The Core i5-12400F also does pretty well in terms of power usage, particularly given its performance competitiveness versus the Ryzen 5 5600. But the notably quicker Core i5-12600K does require a greater amount of energy to deliver its higher performance versus the Ryzen 7 5700X. Given the modest power consumptions, it comes as no surprise to see the new Ryzen chips run at very tolerable temperature levels. These two new chips, and the other Ryzen 5 and Intel Core i5-12400F by extension, don't need a cooler as proficient or as expensive as our 360mm all-in-one. The Core i5-12600K is a little hotter and juicier versus its Ryzen 7 5700X price competitor though. Then again, the Ryzen 7 5800X shows us what a hot running Ryzen chip looks like. With clear frequency headroom available by unlocking the 65 watt TDP induced power shackles, we try our hand initially at some precision boost overdrive tuning. The Ryzen 5 5600 jumped to 4444 MHz under all core loading and drew around 89 watts of package power for a 59 degrees Celsius temperature. The Ryzen 7 5700X increased to around 4475 MHz and 123 watts of package power for a 71 degrees Celsius temperature reading. This still didn't close the gap to the 4.56 GHz 142 watt Ryzen 7 5800X, but it did go some way to doing so. As with all Ryzen processors, except the new Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, manual overclocking can be done via the multiplier unlock, so we jumped into the UEFI and did that. We managed to push the Ryzen 7 5700X to 4.7 GHz using 1.35 volts and high load line calibration in our Gigabyte motherboard's UEFI. This is exactly the same frequency limit as our early Ryzen 7 5800X sample managed. The Ryzen 5 5600 managed an even higher 4.8 GHz all-core using the same 1.35 volts and high load line calibration. Yet again, this is the same frequency that our early sample Ryzen 5 5600X managed. In essence, 
the new cheaper processors can be overclocked to the same frequency as the older more expensive samples based on our specific units that we have and based on our current testing and if this proves to be the case for some of the retail additions that people are getting that makes these new chips look like a good deal compared to their higher priced siblings. The 4.8 GHz Ryzen 5 5600 now outperforms the Core i5-12400F in Citibench R23 NT. That's actually a strong result, particularly as the multiplier locked Intel chip cannot itself be overclocked as a counterpunch. The 4.7 GHz Ryzen 7 5700X is still well behind the performance offered by the stock clocked Core i5-12600K though. That £270-12600K with its mix of P cores and E cores really is an outstanding proposition especially as it can also be overclocked. When overclocked, the package power levels of both the Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5 jump by considerable amounts. They're now well ahead of the power numbers of the Intel stock clocked competitors, but that is to be expected from manual overclocking, as are the temperature levels of mid to high 70s for the 4.8 GHz Ryzen 5 and low to mid 80s for the 4.7 GHz Ryzen 7. The new lower priced Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 processors are absolutely necessary additions to the marketplace for AMD to even consider competing with Intel's highly, highly effective Core i5 range. In general, the £180 Ryzen 5 5600 looks to be a reasonable enough processor. It's marginally but insignificantly slower than the £30 more expensive Ryzen 5 5600X, and its performance versus the £165 Core i5 12400F is very reasonable, workload dependent. For gaming though, we'd argue that that Core i5 is probably the better option, particularly because of its higher 1% low FPS figures in our testing. With that said, our Ryzen 5 5600 could be overclocked to 4.8 GHz, and that should open up a performance gain over Intel's multiplier lock chip, as seen in our Cinebench numbers. Coupled with advantageous value for the AM4 platform, particularly to upgraders, and we feel like the Ryzen 5 5600 is a good value addition that should tick many boxes for budget buyers. For those building a brand new system though, the head-to-head -head between a Core i5-12400F and B660 motherboard versus the Ryzen 5 5600 and a B550 motherboard, that's a much tougher comparison to analyse. My overarching feeling with the Ryzen 7 5700X is that it's simply too little too late to realistically compete with the Core i5-12600K. In fact, even the value proposition versus the Ryzen 7 5800X is questionable unless you're happy to manually overclock or use Precision Boost Overdrive, in which case the new chip is basically a free upgrade. New system builders should probably opt for the Core i5-12600K. It's a faster processor in productivity tasks. It's consistently better in gaming. It also runs on a more advanced and slightly more expensive platform, and it has some overclocking headroom to boot too. For those already on the AIM4 platform wanting a quick and easy drop-in upgrade, then the Ryzen 7 5700X is fine. But the Core i5-12600K is a better processor to the point where one might start to wonder whether upgrading to a new B660 motherboard and that Intel chip is actually worth the hassle for the extra performance and features it delivers. The Ryzen 7 5700X priced at the same point as the Core i5-12600K actually feels to me like AMD trying to cash in on current users who simply can't be bothered to switch platform and want a simple upgrade. And that's not a pricing strategy that I really like. So to finish up this one then, the Ryzen 5 5600 looks to be a good addition to the market, particularly for those already on the AM4 platform who want a quick and simple budget upgrade that they can also tinker with in regards to overclocking, for example. The Ryzen 7 5700X though, that's completely outclassed and outgunned by the Core i5-12600K, so it's a much tougher sell for AMD there. I've been Luke Hill for Kicker. Thank you for watching our video review of the Ryzen 5 5600 and Ryzen 7 5700X processors. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Are you particularly impressed by either of these? Do you think the pricing is a little bit off? Are you happy to see lower cost additions to the AM4 platform? Let us know in the comment section down below. As always, if you like this video, give us a like and subscribe. It really supports the YouTube channel. Please do check out the written page on the main Kicker website and interact with us on social media like Discord and Twitter and the likes. And we'll catch you in the next one.